the church went from being oppressed by the imperial doctrine of forced unity to oppressing others and recreating that same doctrine. Unity, as understood in the age of empires, had nothing to do with people living side by side in perfect harmony. If it had, we never would have heard about a man named Jesus. The unity of people isn't about perfect harmony. It's about respecting the fact that diversity exists because we live in a diverse world and learning to live together, not despite our differences, but because we have differences. How can true unity ever be achieved if our bishops cannot, will not stand up and say, I believe in the equality of all people I will not consent to people being divided up into categories of good and evil, clean and unclean, pure and impure, worthy and worthless. Before I knew that Mary Magdalene was not the penitent prostitute the Christian empire portrayed her as, I heard a gay man say to an angry gay bashing minister, that Jesus was more like me than he was like you. He hung out with 12 guys and a prostitute. Later, of course, I found that this portrayal of Mary Magdalene was another instrument of exclusion and the ongoing attempt of enforcing church unity. History has shown that empires gain power through a process of conquer and divide. But empires also get conquered and divided. This is how the Christian empire lost the battle of the Protestant Reformation. When an empire for the sake of unity attempts to oppress parts of our identity with policies of exclusion, we have no greater responsibility to justice than to challenge that emperor's concept of unity. We have a choice. We can endorse the lie of the emperor's new clothes, or we can yell out, he's not wearing anything and try to save the church from its imperial fate. So no, I'm not a fan of romantic fairy tales. I am a fan of happy endings. The day our bishops stand up to the injustice in our Anglican empire, it will be a new chapter in the life of the church, a happy, Rebeginning. It could happen. <laughs>